बिस्मिल्लामान रहीम आई वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू दिस सेशन ऑन एक्यूट रेस्पिरेटरी इन्फेक्शन एंड सार्स the learning objectives for today's session are that by the end of the session the participants should understand what is ari what are the types of ari its clinical features and all they need to know about ari and then at the end we will discuss what is sars uh, its symptoms and all you need to know about sars as far as acute respiratory infection is concerned acute respiratory infection is an infection that may interfere with the normal breathing it can affect just your upper respiratory system which starts at your sinuses and ends at your vocal cords or just your lower respiratory system which starts at your vocal cords and end ends at your lungs so you Uh, are clear now that uh, what is acute respiratory infection and uh, it has been divided into two parts the upper respiratory system and the lower respiratory system and uh, it, uh, in this definition it has been enumerated that from where the upper respiratory system starts and where it ends and from uh, that point onwards this lower respiratory system starts and it ends in the lungs in the alveoli the two types of uh, acute respiratory infections as regard types of acute respiratory infections are concerned these include the acute upper respiratory infection uh, which uh, was enumerated in the definition as well and uh, it is identified uh, when a person has common cold pharyngitis or otitis media and then if it is not treated well it leads to acute low respiratory infection and this acute low respiratory infection can can cause epi glottitis laryngitis laryngotracheitis bronchitis bronchiolitis and ultimately it can cause pneumonia which can prove to be fatal as far as the clinical features are concerned the most common are running nose cough sore throat difficulty breathing and ear problems and uh, uh, along with it uh, the patient can have fever which is very common and in less developed countries uh, measles and whooping cough uh, are important causes of severe respiratory tract infection a little bit about acute respiratory infection statistics worldwide deaths are 90% of acute respiratory infection deaths are due to pneumonia usually of bacterial origin and the incidence of ari is the same in developed and developing countries however incidence of pneumonia is 3 to 4% in de uh, developed countries whereas it is 20 to 30% in developing countries and the difference is due to prevalence of malnutrition low birth weight indoor air pollution in developing countries and in children below 5 years five episodes of acute respiratory infection occur per child per year uh, the acute respiratory infection is responsible for 30 to 50% of visits to health facilities and 20 to 40% of admissions to hospitals and the leading cause of deafness uh, is an outcome of otitis media uh, i would uh, uh, like to mention that pneumonia kills more children than uh, hiv aids malaria and measles combined and the burden of disease uh, in under 5 mortality uh, 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 in under uh, under 5 which causes under 5 mortality is very high as regards the causative organisms are concerned there are two main organisms which cause uh, acute respiratory infections 
the first organism is streptococcus pneumoniae uh, which is a major cause of death and the risk factors uh, uh, which uh, uh, are seen in developing countries mainly sub saharan africa and south asia uh, for pneumonia are poor uh, uh, people living in poverty those who are malnourished those who are living in remote areas um, and the one of the high risk factors is that it is common in children and the elderly the second organism is hemophilus influenza type b uh, hib uh, and uh, which causes uh, uh, cases of severe pneumonia and meningitis and the main reason of fatality uh, is uh, in chill, um, is uh, or i would say that the main re, uh, the main age group in which we see a lot of fatality are children or elderly Uh, who are either not brought to hospitals or are brought too late or whose treatment is uh, not started on time moving further uh, in every disease epidemiology and social determinants play a very important role and same is the case with acute respiratory infections and in the epidemiological triad we've uh, already uh, studied that there are three main uh, effectors one is the uh, agent the second is the host and the third are environmental factors as far as the agents causing ari are concerned i will show you a chart you can uh, go through this chart and uh, it shows the common agents of respiratory infections starting from clinical illnesses like common cold uh, which we called uh, rhinitis then pharyngitis and tonsillitis epiglottitis bronchiolitis and finally pneumonia you can um, uh, go through all these uh, bacteria and viruses and fungi um, uh, which are, or other organisms uh, which uh, cause uh, all these illnesses related to acute respiratory infections i'll give you a while to just go through the chart this chart shows both bacterial vi viral uh, fungi and other organisms uh, which cause uh, both upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract infections as far as the host i've uh, enumerated the agent factors now we come to the host factors uh, illness rates uh, uh, are higher in young children and decrease with age with a peak at 5 years age and infection is more in women than men then under 3 years uh, uh, children under 3 years are more vulnerable and then those uh, others who are more vulnerable are malnourished uh, individuals then those who are underweight those who have uh, comorbidities then moving further to the environmental factors these uh, uh, include climatic conditions um, uh, cold weather is uh, uh, kind of uh, increases the incidence of acute respiratory infections then high humidity uh, is also one of the causes then if there is poor housing uh, or overcrowded dwellings these are risk factors poor nutrition is an environmental risk factor low birth weight intense indoor smoke pollution um, is also a risk factor and the extent of influenza epidemics uh, is dependent on infected children in households on maternal cigarette smoking um, if there are a lot of day care centers and uh, children are not looked after well over there and uh, uh, another reason of the uh, uh, high in, uh, incidence or uh, prevalence of in influenza epidemics um uh, uh, or i would say is seen more in urban communities rather than rural communities because in urban communities uh, people are uh, living uh, in closed houses and uh, uh, usually we see more overcrowded uh, dwellings in urban communities as far as the mode of transmission is concerned uh, the main are airborne route person to person contact and uh, 
as far as the control measures are concerned we need to improve primary health care services we need to treat uh, acute respiration uh, respiratory infections as early as possible and uh, uh, one of the um, uh, complications uh, of ari which is pneumonia uh, i would say that reduction in pneumonia can be achieved with effective treatment and education of the mother is very important in case of children to identify signs of pneumonia and i would also recommend you folks to go through the world health organization organization guidelines related to acute respiratory infections though i will be covering most of them in my session today as far as the clinical assessment is concerned the things which have to be seen um, among those who are less than 2 months old to up to 5 years age is coughing whether they have stopped feeding they are not feeding well any antecedent illness uh, uh such as measles fever uh, if uh, uh, the child is excessively drowsy and difficult to wake uh, uh, and of course we have to consider the duration of the signs and symptoms if there are any convulsions if there is irregular breathing then short periods of not breathing or child uh, turning blue uh, is a warning sign and then uh, um, we need to take history of treatment during the illness as far as physical examination is concerned look for the chest in drawing and uh, look and listen for strider harsh voice when breathing uh this condition is called croup look for wheezes uh, whistling noise uh, when breathing out is difficult check if there is recurrent wheezes uh, during uh, one year then um, uh, check if there is ab uh, the child is abnormal abnormally sleepy or difficult to wake feel for fever or low body temperature check for malnutrition then um, uh, check for cyanosis which is a sign of hypoxia and this needs to be checked in good uh, light and uh, i have uh, as you can see in the slide i have uh, given uh, 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 if there is fast breathing that is more than 60 breaths in under 2 months then this is a warning sign you uh, need to immediately initiate treatment or if there are more than 50 breaths per minute uh, in uh, children 2 months to 12 months or if there are uh, more than 40 breaths per minute in children 12 months to 5 years so we have to take it seriously as far as the classification of illness is concerned uh, there are four types one is very severe disease then if there is pneumonia uh, uh, there is normal pneumonia there is severe pneumonia or there is no pneumonia at all if the disease is severe uh, uh, we certain it uh, when the child is not able to drink there are convulsions strider severe malnutrition is seen then immediate uh, admission in hospital uh, 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 needs to be considered in severe pneumonia there is nasal flaring grunting cyanosis increased respiratory rate difficulty in breathing there is chest in drawing there is wheeze and uh, at times uh, uh, pneumonia is not severe but again uh, you have to do your own clinical assessment uh, to uh, carry on with the treatment or initiate treatment and then there are certain conditions when there is no pneumonia but there is only cough or cold as far as the diagnosis of acute respiratory infection is concerned uh, respiratory examination by a doctor is required if the infection is in the low respiratory tract an x-ray or ct scan is required lung function test pulse oximetry sputum examination uh, in a respiratory exam the doctor focuses on the patient's breathing they will uh, check for uh, fluid and uh, inflammation in the lungs by listening for abnormal sounds uh, in um, uh, the patient's lungs when he or she breathes the doctor may peer into uh, uh, the nose and ears and check uh, the throat 
If uh, the doctor believes the infection is in the low respiratory tract, an X-ray or CT scan uh, may be necessary to check the condition of the lungs. And uh, lung function tests have uh, been useful as diagnostic tools. Then pulse oximeter, oximetry uh, can, uh, is also used to check how much oxygen gets into the lungs. And uh, as now we've seen in COVID-19, if the oxygen saturation drops, uh, it is recommended to take uh, the patient immediately to a healthcare facility. And same is the case over here in acute respiratory infection. Then a doctor may also take a swab uh, uh, from uh, nose or mouth or ask uh, to uh, cuff up a sample of sputum and the material cuffed up from the, this is the material cuff, cuffed up from the lungs to check for the type of virus or bacteria causing the disease. Uh, now I will uh, show you a few charts which you can also later on uh, see either in my uh, uh, this uh, video or uh, you can consult your books and you will also find the, these charts um, maybe in some different formats in your books. And the management of very severe disease, of course, the signs I've already discussed, not able to drink, there are convulsions, uh, the individual is abnormally sleepy or difficult to wake, there is strider in calm child or there is severe malnutrition. And we classify as it as very severe disease. And the treatment is that we need to immediately, if we are at the primary healthcare level, we need to immediately refer the patient to the hospital then give a first dose of an antibiotic, treat fever if present, treat wheezing if present. If there is cerebral malaria is suspected, then anti-malarials need to be given. Then management of a pneumonia in a child age, two months up to five years, you can see. Uh, I'll give you time, you can just go through the chart. And in this chart enumerates uh, uh, the different signs and classifies uh, uh, the, the condition uh, according to the signs. If it is severe pneumonia, pneumonia or there is no pneumonia at all and then uh, the recommended treatment is also given. And if a child has been started antibiotics for pneumonia, the child needs to be reassessed in two days. And again, signs have to be seen if there is worsening or the, uh, the condition is the same or the condition is improving, like breathing has become slower, there is less fever, eating is better. So if this is, uh, there is improvement, then uh, finish the antibiotic in five days. Uh, but if the condition is the same, uh, you may consider changing the antibiotic and if the condition worsens, they refer immediately to the hospital. Then this is classification and management of illness in young infants. Again, I'll give you some time to go through it, the signs, how we classified that uh, there is very severe disease, uh, what is uh, the treatment. Of course, uh, if you are at the primary healthcare or secondary healthcare level, immediately transfer the patient either if you are at the primary healthcare level to a secondary healthcare facility and if it is in the secondary healthcare facility and the condition is not improving, immediately to a tertiary healthcare facility. I hope you have gone through it, but you can uh, uh, later on uh, go through my uh, this uh, video and uh, Again, see if you've missed anything. Uh, as far as treatment of pneumonia is concerned, the daily dose schedule of uh, cotrimoxazole, uh, which is uh, readily available even in our rural areas, uh, is given in this table. And uh, both if the, uh, the child can take a tablet, uh, the pediatric tablet dose is given. Uh, according to the age of the child or according to the weight of the child. So uh, three different uh, uh, schedules are given over here. One is for two months children and then uh, 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 we have a different one for two to 12 months and for children from one year to five years. And then we, in addition to tablets, um, you can also see that uh, if we are giving a syrup, 
then what will be the dose? Then treatment of severe pneumonia from two months to five years, um, as far as antibiotics are concerned, uh, you can go uh, through this chart and you can see uh, the dose of the antibiotics is enumerated and uh, what should be the interval. Of course, it is uh, six hourly in um, a majority of the cases. And uh, if it is injectables, uh, depending upon the injections, uh, the route is also given. Uh, but uh, uh, at times, uh, if there is a blood culture has been done and there is some sensitive antibiotic, so in addition to the ones mentioned over here, that antibiotic can be considered. Uh, but since there, uh, uh, in urban areas, there is a lot of drug resistance, so the treating physician can consider giving an antibiotic uh, according to the condition of the, uh, the patient, either it's a child, elderly or an adult. So again, this is uh, almost a little bit of uh, repetition from the last uh, slide. Then uh, uh, coming to uh, prevention of acute respiratory infections, of course, uh, uh, the main prevention is immunization. And uh, 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 what we can consider is uh, 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 um, giving a measles vaccination on time, hip vaccination, pneumococcal pneumonia uh, vaccine you can go uh, but uh, one thing I would uh, like to mention over here is that uh, the present understanding of the risk factors of respiratory tract infection in childhood indicates several approaches for primary prevention and in developing countries improved living conditions, better nutrition and reduction of smoke pollution, um, uh, especially indoors will reduce the burden of uh, uh, mortality and morbidity associated with acute respiratory infections. And other preventive measures uh, include uh, uh, associate, uh, uh, a better maternal and child health care services and then as you can see in the chart immunization is an important measure to reduce cases of pneumonia which occur as a complication uh, of uh, vaccine preventable uh, diseases especially measles so it is obvious that the community support is essential to reduce the disease burden and families with young children must be helped to uh, recognize pneumonia um, of course this will help to prevent pneumonia or its complications and health promotional activities are especially important in vulnerable areas. Uh, with this, I uh, end uh, the session on acute respiratory infections. Now I will be moving to uh, the next topic which I am going to discuss today and that is SARS. Uh, a lot of you might be knowing what does SARS stand for uh, and if you don't know about it I would like to uh, educate you that uh, it is severe acute respiratory syndrome. It, SARS stands for severe acute respiratory syndrome and it is a viral uh, uh, respiratory illness caused by a coronavirus called SARS uh, associated coronavirus. Uh, you would be uh, thinking that uh, uh, is it the same coronavirus which has caused COVID-19? No, it is one of the precursors of the present uh, uh, COVID-19. And uh, uh, this COVID-19 has existed around uh, um, 8000 BC uh, before Christ existed. And even in uh, uh, certain cases, uh, uh, some have... Uh, they predicted that uh, uh, it existed even 50 million years ago, the coronavirus. So those people who think that the coronavirus is a, a new entity, is something new which has come up, I would like to tell them, no, this is not a new thing. It's a very old thing. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the major uh, uh, illnesses uh, which uh, took place, um, uh, uh, I would... Uh, Rather, I'll discuss uh, with, uh, this SARS with you later on that where it initially came up as an epidemic in which countries and uh, 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 what were the timelines, how it spread. As far as its incubation period is concerned, this has been estimated to be two to seven days, but commonly it is three to five days. 
as far as the mode of transmission is concerned you can uh, see in this slide how uh, this uh, spreads and the primary mode of transmission appears to be through direct or indirect contact of uh, contact of mucous membranes of eyes nose or mouth with respiratory uh, droplets of with fomites and the use of aerosol generating uh, procedures like endotracheal intubation bronchoscopy nebulization treatments in hospitals may amplify the transmission of sars corona virus and the virus is shed in stools uh, but the role of fecal oral transmission is unknown yet and uh, the natural reservoir appears to be the horseshoe bat which eats uh, uh, and drops uh, fruits ingested by uh, kivets uh, the earlier presumed reservoir and a, a likely amplifying host and the sars virus can survive for hours on common surfaces surfaces outside the human body and for up to 4 days in human waste the the virus can also survive at least for 24 hours on a plastic surface at room temperature and can live for extended periods in the cold so i think this will give you a pretty good uh, idea of the mode of transmission then uh, as far as the symptoms of sars are concerned uh, the patient can have high fever which could be uh, more than 100 degrees uh, fahrenheit uh, at the outset or 38 degrees more than 38 degrees centigrade and there could be headache overall feeling of discomfort and body aches uh, some experience mild respiratory symptoms there could be diarrhea and dry cough most developed pneumonia you would say these are the almost the same symptoms like uh, that of covid-19 but as i told you this is a corona virus and uh, this corona virus uh, uh, which causes uh, uh, severe acute respiratory uh, uh, syndrome is the precursor of the present covid-19 covid-19 is i you can say it's a mutated form maybe of uh, this uh, virus which corona virus which cause sars then as far as a uh, diagnosis uh, and epi uh, ep epidemiological aspects are concerned uh, diagnostic tests required for laboratory confirmation of sars are very important and the conventional reverse transcript is that pcr real time pcr um uh, assay uh, is helped in detecting the viral rna present uh, in at least two different clinical specimens example na nasopharyngeal or stool specimens or what we can do is that the same clinical specimen is collected on two or more occasions during the course of the illness example uh, a sequential nasopharyngeal aspirates or uh, again um, uh, what we can do is a new extract from the uh, original clinical sample is tested positive by two different assays or uh, repeat real time pcrs um, on each occasion of testing and uh, finally a virus culture from any clinical specimen can also be considered then enzyme link the immunosorbent assay elisa uh, is also considered and uh, negative antibody test or serum collected during the acute phase of illness followed by positive antibody test or convalescent uh, on convalescent phase and then serum tested simultaneously or a four fold or greater rise in antibody titer against sars um a corona virus between acute phase um a serum specimen and a convalescent phase serum specimen uh, it means paired sera is tested simultaneously so in the absence of known sars corona virus transmission to humans the positive predictive value of a sars corona virus uh, diagnostic test is ex extremely low therefore the diagnosis should be independently verified in one or more WHO uh, uh, international sars reference uh, um, and verification network laboratories so every single case of sars must be reported to the world health organization as far as the epidemiological aspect is concerned 
uh, healthcare workers, especially those involved in procedures uh, uh, generating aerosols, uh, uh, accounted uh, for 21 percent of all cases in the past. And maximum virus excretion from the respiratory tract occurs on about day 10 of illness and then starts declining. And the efficiency of transmission appears to be greater following exposure to severely ill patients or uh, those experiencing uh, rapid clinical deterioration, usually during the second week of illness, uh, when symptoms, symptomatic cases uh, were isolated within five days of the onset of illness, few cases of secondary transmission occurred. And there, were, uh, there was no evidence that uh, patients transmit infection 10 days after fever has resolved. Uh, again, um, uh, you would be surprised that we say the same things about COVID-19. But as I mentioned earlier, of course, uh, the SARS uh, is a precursor of the COVID-19 virus or infection. And uh, children are rarely affected by SARS. Uh, to date, there uh, have been uh, two reported cases of transmission from children to adults and no report of transmission from child to child. And uh, three separate epidemiological investigations have uh, not found any evidence of SARS transmission in schools. And furthermore, no evidence of SARS has been found in infants of mothers who were infected during pregnancy. Uh, here I would like to mention that international flights have been associated with transmission of SARS from symptomatic probable cases to passengers or crew. And uh, the World Health Organization recommends uh, exit screening and other measures to reduce the opportunities for further international spread associated with air travel during the epidemic uh, period. And uh, now in case of uh, COVID-19, you have seen that quarantine has again been introduced, which had been abundant for many, many years. So quarantine and isolation has been started now. Uh, as far as the complications are concerned, uh, as with any viral pneumonia, pulmonary decompensation is the most feared uh, uh, problem and acute respiratory dist distress syndrome occurs in about 16% of patients and uh, about 20 to 30% of patients required intubation and mechanical ventilation and um, uh, the outcome of uh, intensive care include infection with nosocomial pathogens, nosocomial means hospital acquired infections then there could be tension pneumothorax from ventilation at high peak pressures and uh, there could be non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. The treatment is uh, uh, severe cases require intensive support, although a number of uh, different agents including uh, um, which you can see over here, I've mentioned them uh, can be used. As far as uh, ribavirin is concerned, 400 to 600 milligram per day uh, uh, and uh, 4 grams per day uh, of, uh, uh, is considered. Then um, uh, some other antivirals could be considered. Then interferon type 1, intravenous immunoglobulins and systemic uh, corticosteroids were used to treat SARS uh, patients during the 2003 epidemic. And the treatment efficacy of these therapeutic agents remains inconclusive and further research is still needed. And you'll be surprised the same things are being said about COVID-19. Uh, the subsequent studies with uh, 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 Ribavirin show no activity against uh, uh, the virus in vitro. And uh, the retrospective analysis of the epidemic in Toronto suggests uh, worse outcomes in patients who receive the drug and the prognosis the overall mortality rate uh, of identified cases is about 14 percent uh, ranging from less than one percent of persons under 24 years of age to greater than 50 percent in persons over 65 percent uh, 65 years of age and uh, poor prognostic factors include advanced age, chronic hepatitis B, infection treated with um, uh, some um, non-related drugs, high uh, initial or high peak, uh, peak 
electrode dehydrogenase uh, concentration, uh, then high neutrophil count on presentation, diabetes mellitus, acute kidney disease, low counts of CD4 and CD8 on presentation. Many subclinical cases probably go undiagnosed and seasonability uh, as with influenza is not established. Seasonality as with influenza is not established. And as far as prevention is concerned, before I go to the global context, as there are, uh, there is uh, no vaccine against SARS. Um, uh, the, the preventive measures for SARS control are appro uh, appropriate uh, detection and protective measures, which include prompt identification of person with SARS, uh, uh, their uh, movements and uh, contacts, and uh, effective isolation of SARS patients in hospitals appropriate protection of medical uh, staff treating these patients, comprehensive identification and isolation of suspected SARS cases. Uh, but I think that exit screening is important than um, uh, simple hygienic measures such as hand washing uh, after touching patients, use of appropriate and well-fitted masks and, in, uh, and introduction of infection control measures uh, are very important. Exit screening of international travelers, timely and accurate reporting and sharing of information with other authorities uh, or governments uh, uh, are good preventive measures. Uh, but I think that this COVID-19 vaccine uh, now may provide some protection against SARS as well. As far as the, the global uh, context is concerned, outbreaks of infectious diseases can attain epidemic proportions in many countries more quickly than in previous centuries and that is because of increased uh, speed of travel and larger number of travelers and thus the limiting uh, limiting the spread of infectious disease requires a joint effort on part of all the countries and you see uh, you can see in the case of uh, COVID-19 now uh, this has been uh, uh, really practiced in letter and spirit. And the controlling uh, uh, the spread of disease, the success requires that governments identify outbreaks of an infectious disease sooner after the initial cases appear, isolate persons who have uh, the disease or have been in close contact uh, with others having the disease until they are no longer contagious and minimize the number of non-infected persons who can come in contact with currently infected persons or in any place where germs are likely to be present and then uh, warn other governments so they can take action to ward off spread to their countries and I think uh, use of masks is also very important although uh, I have uh, gone through different uh, uh, books and textbooks and reference books they did not mention masks but I think masks uh, will also uh, uh, help uh, reduce the spread of this disease. This is a uh, just a map uh, to show you how the outbreak took place and uh, uh, how it spread as far as the SARS outbreak of 2002-2003 uh, uh, initially the cases the number of cases the number of countries which it affected the number of deaths which took place and around 40 billion dollar uh, worldwide was lost in trade and tourism and same now you can see uh, what has happened in COVID. In the global context, I'll just give you a timeline. You can just go through it. I will not be reading everything for you, how um, atypical pneumonia was identified in China in 2000, November 2002, how it moved further. Then finally, the end result was 7,083 cases and 644 deaths took place in China because of SARS. Then uh, SARS in Vietnam appeared in February 26 and finally the end result was that uh, 63 cases and 5 deaths. Similarly, SARS um, in Canada um, uh, was uh, seen in November uh, on November 2007 to uh, 2027 uh, November 2002 and uh, finally the end result was 251 cases and 43 deaths. With this, I end today's uh, session and uh, concluding, I would say that acute respiratory infections can lead to pneumonia, which can be fatal if not treated on time. And SARS is the precursor of COVID-19 and prevention is better than cure. With this, I end today's session and I thank you with the message, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that uh, please tell your loved ones to follow all the preventive measures uh, which have uh, been um, uh, prescribed and has been promoted by our government, by all governments, by the World Health Organization for prevention of COVID-19. Thank you very much.